saying I'm not really a scary Englishman, I promise. But today I hope to share with you some information which could change your lives. Now I know that as some of you are looking at us thinking, how come we didn't have to pay any money to come here today? Correct? You could not. You could not. Because I understood that many places would charge you a fee just to come to listen. Well, that's not us. And I taught us being jointly with Worldwide and ourselves and Clear Path, my colleague from the UK. What we want to be able to do is provide you information that will help you help us. Let me tell you briefly about who we are. We are a healthcare, we're not a recruitment company. We're a company that's British owned, working in Malaysia, that's had a significant amount of experience sending nurses to the UK. Since 2001 to 2011, I was responsible for sending 7,500 nurses to the UK, which is quite a large number. So I believe I can speak to you with authority about what we're talking about today. And you'll notice that when we say that, um, we talk about experience team, we're talking about our team not just in Malaysia, because that's where I'm based in Malaysia, but also back in the UK. And again, here in Sri Lanka, we have our new friends here worldwide who are going to help you if you want to go to the UK to go there. After years and years, and I mean this, years of stopping non-European nurses coming to the UK, they finally put nurses back what we call the shortage occupation list, the SOL, okay, shortage occupation list. Remember that term, it's quite important because this is the contract that you come to the UK on, shortage occupation list. Why is that so important? Because it allows us to bring non-EU nurses to the UK on the same terms and conditions as British nurses. That may not make sense to you, it may make sense to you, but the problem we had before was they never said you can't bring a nurse to the UK, they just said you have to pay them a huge amount of money, much more than even English nurses, if you want them to come and work in the UK. Now they've got rid of that. So now we have a situation having also removed what we call the cap or the limit or the number of nurses. This has only happened in the last six months. Before, we were restricted as to how many nurses or doctors we could bring to the UK. Now, we have no restriction at all. That's how serious the situation is. And the other uh, really important point that I want to share with you, uh, I don't know if any of you are newly graduated. If you are, one of the things that's happened just recently is that they've removed the necessity, the need, for you to have one year's work experience before you come to the UK. This is a game changer. It means that somebody who's just completed their education in university or college can potentially go directly to the UK. They don't have to do one year's work experience first. This was a, a rule that's been there ever since I've been involved in recruiting nurses. It goes back to 2001 and they never changed it. Now they've changed it. That's one of the other major things that they've changed. So do you think this is going to solve the problem? Well, technically it could. Because if we can now bring in lots of nurses from overseas, then we're going to solve the problem in the UK. But now, one other major factor, again, which, again, I have no idea. Out of interest, has anybody here recently graduated or about to graduate from nursing school or college? Anybody within the last two years? Yes? Yeah, great. Remember, let's get those arms up. 
Well, that's great. The second question, how many of you were taught in English? Were taught in English? Can you put your hands up if you were taught in English completely? Please. Both hands if you want. I don't mind. Okay. This is getting better and better. Did you do your practice work in English? Yes? Practice work in English? Yes? You know what I mean? I'm just talking about when you were doing the practice work, your practical part, your theory, your practical, I'm talking about the practical part. Did you do that in English? Maybe. Okay, so group, big group over there. Let me tell you the best news I can give you today is that if you were trained entirely in English, did your practice work in English, it is possible that you will not be required to undertake IELTS or OET. Okay? I'll repeat that. May not need to do IELTS or OET. If you graduated over two years ago, then sorry guys, you still have to do OET and English. No trouble. this. can you raise your hand? Yeah? Yes? Please put them higher. I can't see them if they're here. If you put them higher, that's great. Okay. Uh, those of you who are BSc nurses, graduate nurses, you all have So, the majority of you are BSc nurses, and some are diploma. Well, both of you, both groups, potentially will be able to go to the UK. Immigration process for nursing. Um, again, it's really not complicated. What happens is, you will be invited to come to the UK once you make your application. And that invitation also means that we can now employ you in the UK. To be employed in the UK, and we're going to cover that in more detail in a moment, you have to have a sponsor. Nobody can just go to the UK, and that's also for your safety to know that anybody that can get a visa for you has already been approved by the UK government. Okay, so that's again an important part. When you look at what has to, has to, to happen, you, you will be coming on a shortage occupation list contract, which is three years. Technically, as it says there, you can stay up to five years and 14 days, but in this particular instance, you are coming on the shortage occupation list three-year contract. It's possible to renew that by using a different trust, and in fact, we believe this is going to change again in your favor over the next year or so, because so far we've had nobody complete the three years of the shortage occupation list contract. Why? Because it only started two years ago. If you want to come to the UK, you could also come as a student, okay, come as a student. You can do your BSc in the UK, because I know that's really difficult here to, to upgrade from diploma to uh, a BSc. And most of you, all of you go abroad, some of you come to Malaysia. I've met some of you, not maybe anybody here, but some of Sri Lankan nurses in Malaysia who are now doing a BSc. So they can do it either in, say, Malaysia or they can do it in the UK. If you were to go in the UK, um, it will be that at some stage you would have to pay for that, and I'll come on to that in a second. But the most important thing is you would then become a BSc graduate nurse in the UK, so you become a British nurse graduated in the UK. And that will allow you to work virtually anywhere in the world. Okay? So be aware of that. Please don't panic. And the reason I say don't panic is that when you're studying in the UK, you can earn while you learn. And you can earn a fairly sizable amount of money. You can work 20 hours a week. Um, I think the minimum wage at the moment is still 7.50. 7 pounds 50 was going about to go up to 8.50 at the moment. Yeah, 7 pounds, and that's, multiply that by 223. How many mathematicians we got in here? It's a fair bit of money in any case, per hour. So you can earn a reasonable sum of money in the time that you're actually training, okay?